All right, Ji. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Students, today we will be talking about double entry. Now, what does double entry specifically means? Double entry is a system on which entire accounting is based. You can also think of double entry as a base for a building to stand. If there is no proper base, the building cannot be erected. Right? All right. Let's move forward to double entry. There are two terms in double entry. One is debit and another is credit. Now students that are not familiar with accounting previously think that, which is wrong assumption, they think that debit means to add or to plus and credit means to subtract or minus, which is entirely wrong. Debit does not mean a plus and credit does not mean a minus. So what does debit and credit stands for? Debit and credit are special terms which are used in double entry systems. Now you can also think of uh, an account. So what is an account? Account is a place where different transactions are summarized. Now if in an account there are two sides the left hand side of an account is known as debit side and right hand side of an account is known as credit side. Again, there is no justification uh, what we can think of why does the term debit is used for the left side and why does the term credit is used for right side. Uh, we will understand in a while. Now, there is two things. One is debit nature and another is credit nature. Now, what does debit nature mean? Uh, first of all, we have something in accounting which is known as asset. Now, what does asset mean? Asset means anything that a business or individual owns. Whatever I have in my possession or whatever I own is known as an asset. Uh, there are n number of assets available such as bank balance is an asset, uh, the cash that we have in our pockets is our asset, uh, the inventory that we sell which is known as stock to us customers it is also known as asset, the building in which we live or operate business in is also known as asset, uh, the machine that we are using in factory plant it is also known as asset the car we drive is also known as asset so anything that is in our possession and which will be giving benefit us uh, in the near future is known as asset so whenever we talk about asset we say that asset has a debit nature secondly liability has a credit nature Liability, what does a liability mean? Liability means an obligation of the business or an individual. If I have taken a loan from a bank and I have to return it in the near future, the liability is known as, the loan is known as a liability, which means uh, I have an obligation to pay back the liability in near future. So whenever we are borrowing from someone it is known as a liability and what does mean capital uh, capital is also known as owners interest in the business whatever in the business is left after paying off all the liabilities is known as capital in simple terms liability is a capital of outsiders and capital is liability of owners means the amount of money which the owner has invested in the business is known as a liability. Now, we were uh, trying to understand the specifics of double entry. We can start from this that assets has a debit balance, uh, debit nature and liability and capital has a credit nature. Uh, if an asset has a debit nature means whenever asset goes up, we will debit that specific asset and whenever liability and capital goes up the liability and capital is always credited asset is always increased by way of debit 
and liability and capital is always increased by way of credit. Uh, let's move forward. Whenever asset is increased, it is debited. Why? Because the nature of asset is debit. And whenever asset is decreased, whenever asset is decreased or goes down, it will be represented by a credit. And similarly, it is vice versa. Whenever liability and capital increases, it is credited because the nature of it uh, is credit. And whenever liability and capital, uh, we want to decrease the liability and capital, we will debit that liability and capital. So let's move forward. Uh, we have two types of assets known as non-current assets and current assets. Now, what is exactly the difference between non-current and current? Non-current assets, my dear students, are assets of permanent nature. Uh, means there is no change very frequently in these sort of assets. These are permanent in nature. These are bought with the intention to use rather than with the intention to sell. Thirdly, non-current assets uh, are kept for more than one year. Yes, more than one year. Now, there are some examples such as building. Uh, we cannot buy buildings every day. It is of permanent nature. The building doesn't change much in value. So there is much, not much fluctuation in the value of building. Therefore, it is a non-current asset. Non-current assets are also known as fixed assets. Secondly, there are some other examples as well, such as motor vehicles. Again, motor vehicles are also of permanent nature. We have bought them for use rather than for resale. Then we have a machine or plant that is used in a factory. Then there are office equipment and there can be some other examples as well. Secondly, we have current assets. Current assets are cash in hand and cash at bank. And current asset also comprise of things that will soon be converted into cash such as inventory which is also known as goods or stock or stock in trade or merchandise these are all names of inventory now what does inventory means inventory means uh, we have a shop mobile phone shop and we are selling cell phones and gizmos and gadgets and all these gadgets are our inventory why because we are we have bought them with the intention of selling them in near future so why does an inventory is an asset inventory is an asset because it will give us benefit in the future because whenever we will be selling them we will be getting cash in exchange of that secondly we have trade receivables trade receivables also known as debtors previously uh, now what does a uh, term debtor or trade receivable means Debtor or trade receivables are our customers uh, whom we have sold the goods on credit terms. Means in sooner or later they will be going to pay us the amount that they owe. Thirdly, we have bank balance, the amount which we have deposited in our bank account and uh, we have cash balance as well. So these are all current assets. Current assets are have of a temporary nature and non-current assets are of a permanent nature. Current assets such as stocks, inventory are bought for resale and non-current assets are bought for use rather than resale. Current assets change in value very often because we don't have uh, an exact amount of money in cash or in bank for a long period of time. It keeps fluctuating. And non-current assets are of permanent nature because the value doesn't change very often. Now let's move forward. What I have done to explain you the double entry concept, uh, I have divided some common transactions uh, into some uh, types and we will be discussing each of the transaction and understanding what does a debit and credit means. Now what I am specifically making right now, I am making journal entries. Uh, to make a journal entry or to journalize an entry means uh, to record an entry in terms of its debit and credit. 
Now we will see for each type of transaction which account should be debited and which account should be credited. Now remember again, my dear students, debit does not mean a plus, credit does not mean a minus. Whenever an asset increases, it is always debited and whenever a liability or capital increases, it is always credited and vice versa when it is decreased. Now first of all, there is a transaction introduction of capital into the business. Now, uh, you know, if you are doing some sort of business and if you are starting up a business, you need capital for any type of business to start. Now, whenever we are introducing capital, uh, we have also learned, uh, we have already learned that capital has a nature of credit. Whenever capital is increased, we will be crediting the capital account. So capital will be credited. Now, what is debited? Now, there are two things. First of all, this is a very common thing to bring cash or bank balance into the business whenever business is started. Uh, when I'm starting a business, I'm bringing cash or bank from my home, from my personal finance to run the business. So bank is an asset for the business and whenever an asset increases, it will be debited. We will be debiting a bank. Now it is also possible that I bought up a non-current asset from my business. I can give you an example. I am using a van at my home. It is a motor vehicle which can also pick up vehicle which is also be which can also be used for delivery. So what I did, uh, I have taken van from my home to my business. Now for business, it is a new asset a van that is coming. So we will be debiting van account or motor vehicle account. We are debiting an non-current asset account. Secondly, buy non-current asset. Uh, I have bought, uh, we need a computer for use as a cash register in our business. Now, whenever we need to buy some non-current asset, an asset increases. Maybe we have bought a motor vehicle, for example, or a computer. If you are buying a computer, the computer or equipment account will go debit because an asset is increasing. Now, if you have bought a motor vehicle, there can be two things. Firstly, maybe we have bought a motor vehicle uh, through bank account. A bank account, we have uh, paid it for it by check and our bank decreases. And our, if our bank is decreases, as you already know, bank is an asset. Whenever an asset decreases, we'll be crediting and bank account uh, it can also be possible that i haven't paid yet for uh, the amount of money which i owe for a motor vehicle now there comes role of liability uh, to remind liability is an obligation of the business uh, if i have bought a car uh, on credit terms because the car dealer is a friend of mine and he knows me well and he has given me some time, maybe three months to pay off my liability. I will be crediting a liability which is known as payable. Okay. Thirdly, sell a non-current asset. Uh, maybe I have bought a car and now I don't need it probably because I have outsourced my delivery operations to some courier company. Now I am selling my non-current asset. So whenever we are decreasing a non-current asset, an asset goes credit. So I will be crediting motor vehicle account. See, when we have bought a motor vehicle, we have debited an asset account and we are selling the vehicle, we will be crediting motor vehicle account. Now there can be two, two things again. Uh, firstly, I have sold the motor vehicle on cash. So we will be debiting cash or bank. Uh, in accounting specifically in CIE, uh, uh, Cambridge International Examination Accounting uh, whenever there is not mentioned that we have sold something through cash or through check we will always, always be writing bank because bank is by default uh, the mechanism used for receiving payments secondly if we have sold the vehicle, vehicle but we haven't got the money yet why because we have sold the vehicle on credit terms there comes a receivable. Now what does the receivable mean? Receivable means a customer whose uh, home we have sold the goods on credit basis. 
means soon we are going to receive money from him uh, because he is an asset. Whenever an asset increases, we'll be debiting that asset. So we'll be writing receivable if we don't know the name of the person or company whom which we have sold goods. If we know the name of the company that Mr. Ahmed, so we'll be debiting Mr. Ahmed account. Then we have return non-current asset. Now what is happening? We have bought an asset, maybe motor vehicle. And after a while, we came to realize that the vehicle is not working as we have expected. And there is some serious fault in the motor vehicle that we have just bought. So what we'll be doing, we'll be returning that vehicle to our friend whom which we have bought the vehicle. Now we are returning vehicle to a supplier. So motor vehicle is going out of the business. Whenever asset is going out of the business, we'll be crediting that asset because the nature of an asset is debit. Now there can be two things. Firstly, if we have already paid him the money from bank, uh, we will be asking for a refund. Now, if he will be returning us the money, we'll be debiting the bank account because the an asset, uh, whenever an asset increase, we'll be debiting an asset. Uh, there can be some other thing that we have bought a vehicle on credit terms, means we haven't yet paid for the amount that was due to us. Uh, we were having a liability. Now, if you have returned the vehicle, what do you think that we will, will still we will be paying for that asset? No. Uh, as we have already returned the asset, our liability decreases and the nature of liability is credit and where, whenever we will be decreasing a liability, liability will be debited. So payable or the name of uh, Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Ahmed Motors will be debited, liability will be debited. Then we have another transaction, purchase goods and inventory. Uh, let's uh, learn something else. Whenever we will be buying stocks or goods or inventory or merchandise or goods for resale, we'll be using a purchase account. Uh, whenever we are buying goods, the stock is coming into the business and asset is increasing. And what we will do, we will debit the purchase account. Purchase account is always debited. Uh, you also need to learn that we won't be using stock account or inventory account on regular basis. Stock or inventory account is always used at the end of the year adjustments. Uh, now, uh, at this point in time, you need not worry about that stock account. So just remember, we won't be using stock account. Whenever we'll be buying stocks, we will be debiting a purchase account. So why we are debiting purchase account? Because stocks are coming into the business. Whenever we are selling stock, as you know, the stock is going down. We will be crediting the sales account. For buying, we'll be debiting purchase account and for selling, we'll be creating sales account. Whenever customer returns faulty goods to us, uh, means we have sold some goods and due to some reason, customer is returning back those goods. Those goods. Why is that so? Because they are faulty, they are damaged or because they are of wrong size, color or specification or customer just doesn't need it. Uh, if we have an, uh, no questions asked return policy, we'll be getting it back from the customer uh, just to make uh, not make the customer upset. Return inwards account will be used and return inwards will be debit. Why is return inward debited? Because we are getting goods back and the assets are coming into the business. Therefore, return inward account will be debited. Return inward account is also known as sales return account, sales return. And whenever we'll be returning goods to our supplier, this is known as return outward. For the similar reasons that we have discussed in return inward, means the customer, uh, means the sub we are selling, uh, we are returning goods to supplier because the goods are not of specific quality or goods are damaged or the goods we haven't ordered yet and the supplier has delivered it to us or they are of wrong size or specification. Return outward is also known as purchase return and will be crediting purchase return. See, there are four accounts that need to be used. Whenever we are buying stocks, we will be debiting purchase. Whenever we are selling stock, we will be 
crediting sales whenever customers returning goods to us will be debiting return inward account and whenever uh, we are returning goods to a supplier will be crediting return outward account so these four accounts are always used for stocks remember uh, one uh, thing that is very important if we are buying a computer for the business use will be not be debiting purchase account and why is that so because computer is not a stock because we are not a computer dealer computer is uh, our non current asset and is held for use in the business so whenever we are buying computers we will be debiting equipment account and whenever we are buying stocks maybe uh, clothes because we have a textile shop so for clothes we will be using purchase account uh, for our inventory and for computer or motor vehicles or similar type of non current asset we'll be using a non current asset account similarly if you are selling clothes to a customer we will be using sales account and if you are selling our old furniture we'll be using a furniture and fixture account i hope you remember this uh, then we'll move forward when we'll be buying per, uh, goods for business we'll be debiting a purchase account uh, then uh, there can be two things first that we have paid for the inventory we have just bought the will be debiting a uh, will be creating a bank account why because bank is an asset whenever an asset goes down we will be crediting bank account there can be another scenario that we haven't yet paid for the amount that we have uh, for the goods that we have bought and we will be crediting a trade payable trade payable is a liability trade payable is the amount of money that we have to pay our, to our suppliers that the amount that we owe him uh, now if we exactly know the name of the business that we have bought goods from maybe xyz company will be crediting xyz company and if we does not know if we do not know the name of the business that will then we'll be writing a trade payable let let's move forward sold goods your stock to customer whenever we are selling goods to customer we will be crediting sales account why we are crediting the sales account because an asset that is stock it's going down we will be crediting sales account and similarly if we are crediting if we are selling goods maybe we are getting money in form of cash or bank if we are getting money in forms of cash we will be debiting a cash account and if we are getting a check from the customer we will be debiting a bank account so bank and cash are both our assets and uh, maybe we are selling goods on credit so there comes the role of a customer a debtor a trade receiver trade receiver as we remember are our customers whom we have sell goods on credit basis a trade receiver is also an asset we will be writing trade receiver if we do not know the name of the customer if we know the name of the customer specifically we will be write mr ali whose name whatever name is then next transaction is return good from customer maybe customer have return goods to us because they are faulty because he doesn't need them because their goods are damaged so if the goods are coming into the business we are will be debiting return inward account because it is an asset that is coming into our business that the damaged goods return inward is also known as sales return sale return or return inward will be debited now there can be two things firstly if the customer has already paid us the money paid us the money we will be returning that money in, to us we will be giving him a refund so we will be crediting agar our cash or bank account depending that we have paid him by cash or by check or oh, and maybe the customer has not yet paid the money and still has returning goods to us so we'll be crediting the customer account which is known as trade receivable or his name if we know mr ali's account will be credited i hope you are getting the transactions then return goods to supplier if we are returning goods to our suppliers now similarly if the goods are damaged we are returning to our supplier will be using a return outwards account a return outwards is also known as purchase return a return outward or purchase return will be created because goods are going out of the business and asset is decreasing then if you have already paid the money to a supplier we are supposed to get our money back from supplier will be debiting a bank account if the supplier uh, if we haven't yet paid the supplier we are not 
going to pay our supplier because we have already returned the goods and now there is no point paying for goods that we have already returned then we'll be debiting a trade payable now why are we debiting a trade payable you know trade payable is a liability and whenever a liability goes down we'll be debiting that liability now let's move forward next move forward uh, expenses paid now there is another uh, type of item in the accounting vocabulary which is known as expense now what is an expense whenever we are spending money for the business for some business purpose it is known as expense such as rent such as electricity such as bills such as insurance such as cleaning or maybe heating so air conditioning this is known as expense so you must remember an expense has a debit nature so how can we remember that an expense has a debit nature uh, i can give you two reasons to remember that expense is debit first reason is an asset is debit uh, now what is an asset an asset is something that we can take benefit from if we uh, buy if we buy a house uh, we can live in this in that house so that house is an asset similarly if we rent a house similarly if we rent a house the rent is, is is an expense because we are getting benefit from that house as well uh, there is no difference if we buy a house uh, or if we rent a, rent a house in both of the scenarios we are getting benefit from this house similarly if we are paying bill for electricity it is an expense but in return we are living in a home with electricity with air conditioners on or with fans and lights we are getting benefit from that asset okay so expense is also debit because we are getting benefit from uh, various expenses such as insurance uh, in case we have an accident or fire or something or electricity or internet services or mobile carriers these are all expenses but again we are benefiting from those services so you must remember an expense is always a debit then we can also remember from another uh, way that a capital is always credited uh, by now you are uh, sure of this thing that capital has a credit nature so what do you think if we incur an expense uh, will it increase our capital or decrease our capital so some of you might able to guess that uh, expenses reduces our capital uh, something that is reducing our capital an expense or loss is always debited because it reduces our capital you can uh, remember in this way as well uh, whenever we are paying rent rent account is debit why is rent or electricity or insurance is debit because rent has a debit nature or expenses has a debit nature if we have paid the expense will be crediting a bank account or cash account because a cash or bank is an asset if an asset is going down will be crediting an asset uh, there can be another thing that we have just uh, incurred an expense uh, and haven't yet paid for it we have just recorded an expense and haven't yet paid for it then the expense account will be uh, then the liability will be booked which is known as accrued so you need not worry about the word accrued right now we'll be discussing it later in another topic which is known as accruals and prepayments just remember if you haven't paid the rent yet it is a liability which is also known as accrued rent let's move forward another thing which is uh, income received maybe we have an extra uh, space that we have lent it out to another business or an individual uh, for some extra income which is income received uh, if you have already discussed that expense is debited uh, the nature of income will be opposite to that of expense an income or profit or gain is always credit so why is income profit or gain is credit gain or profit or income is credit because capital is credit uh, whenever we are earning some money in the business or in the capacity of individual whenever we are earning something uh, our capital increases whenever business makes a profit the capital of the business is increased by amount of profit that the business has earned so 
anything that increases capital will be carrying same nature as that of capital if the capital is credit income is also credit whenever capital is increasing uh, whenever profit is increasing capital is also increasing so whenever we are earning some income income account is credit in this case the rent receive is credit there can be other incomes as well other examples such as a uh, commission receive or rent receive and discount receive or fees receive or consultancy income and such are the examples if we are receiving money from a tenant uh, maybe in check we will be debiting a bank account because bank is an asset and asset increases in debit and if we are getting money in cash terms we will be debiting a cash account and if the tenant has not yet paid us the money he will be giving us the money soon it will be known as accrued income accrued income we will be recording it in accrued so don't worry about accrued right now accrued is a receivable or a payable then move forward we are moving forward payment to supplier uh, whenever we have bought goods on credit sooner or later we have to pay back the supplier the amount that we are due to pay and a liability is always uh, credit but if we are clearing our debt and uh, we are extinguishing a liability a liability is debited and bank or cash will be debited we are paying a supplier the supplier account mr xyz uh, uh, mr xyz will be debited and if we are paying money through check bank will be credited and if we are paying money through cash cash will be credited then drawings now what does word drawing means drawing means taking out something from the business for personal use now i have a shop and uh, i also live in a house uh, i have a mobile shop and i need a mobile phone for my personal use because my old mobile phone is very old now and i want to get rid of my old phone and want a new phone so i took an iphone x from my business to my home so this is means we have done drawing from the business drawing can be in cash form in check form or in stock form so just remember one thing drawing is always debited say drawing is always debited uh, i am writing drawing in a debit nature drawing is always debit why is drawing debited because drawing reduces our capital a capital is a credit so anything that reduces the drawing such as expense or uh, anything that reduces the capital such as expense or drawing is always debited drawing is also known as appropriation of profit means we are uh, taking out profits from the business uh, which is known as drawing so drawing account is always debited now it the answer depends on what is credited that if we are taking cash out from the business for personal use maybe to uh, i am taking cash out of the business to pay uh, school fees of my kids this is known as cash drawing if we are taking money out of from our bank account for personal use the bank account will be credited and if we are taking stocks out of the business will be creating a purchase account uh, remember we never use stock account during the year stock account is always used end of the year whenever we are buying mobile phones for the business to resell them will be debiting purchase account and when we ever we are taking out uh, uh, stock from business will be crediting a purchase account then second last transaction if we are receiving a loan from bank see many businesses need a loan from the bank because they don't have sufficient capital from themselves or friend and family to invest in the business then they seek help from uh, commercial institutions such as a bank so if we are getting loan from the bank our bank account goes up why because we need the money and bank has lended us the money for some years maybe the bank account is debited Uh, if we are taking out a loan loan also comprises of a liability a liability loan account will be credited maybe loan from barclays bank then last transaction but not the least if we are repaying the loan back to the business 
uh, you already know bank account will be created why because we are returning the money that we have uh, taken out from the bank and if you are returning the money the asset goes down bank account will be created similarly the loan payable will also be debited why because loan is a liability and the nature of liability is credited whenever we are returning back the liability to bank uh, we are extinguishing a liability liability will be debited so these were the transactions that we have learned so for the sake of remembering it uh, i have devised a mnemonic uh, so i am sure students you already know what does a mnemonic means uh, just to remind mnemonic means some set of alphabets or numbers that we devise to remember a particular concept maybe so we can remember it for a long period of time so i have devised a mnemonic for this aed so i uh, i have specified aed as arab emirates dirham you know the currency of uae is dirhams which is known as arab emirates dirham now what is arab emirates dirham stand for here a for assets e for expenses and d for drawings so we can remember that aed debit arab emirates dirham is always debit mean asset expense and drawing has a debit nature whenever asset expense and drawing goes up these are always debited similarly lic lic uh, uh, what i have named lic as L L life insurance company life insurance company l for liability i for income and c for capital liability income and capital lic life insurance company is always credit why is lic credit liability income and capital always increases on credit so these things aed always increases on debit and lic life insurance company always increases on credit and vice versa whenever we want to decrease arab emirates dirham we will be crediting it and whenever we want to decrease life insurance company liability income and capital will be debiting so this is the end of the lecture i hope students you understood the 